Hey guys, today we're gonna to be talking about the boom lift behind me. We're gonna go over certain things like a circle check to ensure that all the safety mechanisms on the machine work and that all the fluid levels are topped off on it. We're also gonna be going over different applications and how the functionality of the machine will help you do your job to ensure that you're as comfortable as possible while using the machine. While doing your pre-checks on the machine prior to using it, always check all four tires for debris or anything that could cause damage to the machine while operating it. Note that this tire that we're using is a rough terrain foam fill tire, so this one is solid with foam inside of it. Other tires and machines may have different tires though, such as electric boom lifts are normally equipped with pneumatic non-marking tires to ensure that the ground that you're operating on does not get any kind of scuff marks on it in a warehouse setting. Other tires that may be used are also turf tires. These are typically used in sand or on an area that requires lower ground pressure and divots in the ground. These are air-filled tires and do not have these style tread on the tire. They will typically have more of a, you could say a golf cart tire tread that is not going to mark up the ground as much and will allow you to use it better in a softer ground environment. While you're checking the fluid levels on your machine, ensure that they're both full. On this side of the machine, you have the fuel tank and the hydraulic tank. The fuel tank should be full when it's topped off at this flat line right here. The hydraulic tank is full right now, which is indicated by this black line. The blue line would indicate that it is too full. The orange line would indicate that it is low. While operating the machine, you will notice that this will come down as the hydraulic fluid is pushed out to the appendages of the boom lift. But when you retract everything back in, the fluid level will go back up. On the engine side of the machine, you need to check for your coolant level and your engine oil level. On the coolant level side here to check it, the tanks themselves are pretty thick where you can't see the liquid. You just simply open this cap here to check and visualize the coolant level to make sure it's full. And down lower here, you'll see your engine dipstick to check your oil levels. Make sure that when you put your oil dipstick back in, it's in there tight so that oil doesn't come out of it. And then after that, you do a visual inspection to make sure there are no leaks, whether they'd be hydraulic or engine oil or coolant. we're gonna talk about the safety stickers on the machine. These are very important for you as an operator to see and to notify anybody in case you need to lock out the machine, which means do not use it until the issue is fixed. The first one you're going to see here is the start. This is simply just to let you know how to start the machine from the ground controls. The next one you're going to see, which is the power emergency stop, which is right here. Typically means that the machine has a major error and the engine is on a critical point of having to shut down and you need to press the emergency stop button immediately. The next thing you will notice here is the battery charging condition. If that light comes up, that means your battery is not charging properly for the machine. The engine coolant temperature light right here is for the coolant of the machine to ensure the engine is not getting too hot. Right here for glow plug, this is just a pre-start machine. The engine has to go through a warming process to ensure that you do not have any issues with the machine. This also allows you to operate in a cooler environment. The next thing you'll see here is the function enable switch, which is the safety switch on the control panel to allow you to actually operate the machine. You have to hold this switch down during the entire process of operating the ground controls of the machine. On the engine malfunction indicator, that simply means that your engine has a fault code and you need to refer to the owner's manual or calling your local supplier or us to ensure that you find out what the code actually is. Auxiliary power, this is simply for if the engine is not running or not capable of running, this allows you to lower the machine back down to get your operator out of the air. The platform control and ground control is simply just switching the key back and forth to if you're gonna be operating from the ground or from the basket. The engine oil pressure is very important. If you see that light come on, immediately shut down the engine and check the fluid level of the oil to ensure you do not run the engine out of oil. After that engine oil temperature, these machines are equipped with oil coolers. If for some reason the oil gets too hot, you need to also shut down the machine and refer to the owner's manual or place a service call to have this looked at. 
because the engine can overheat the oil and this will shut down the machine. Low fuel level. Always check your fuel to ensure that it is full and topped off for the job you're doing. And lastly, the drive steer disabled. This just means while you're operating on the ground, you will not be able to drive the machine. This is the load chart sticker. This allows us to see how much weight you can put in the basket while using the machine at its max reach. On this particular machine, the max load is 550 pounds or 249 kilograms. You'll be able to use that much weight in the basket with it extended at its max reach. There are boom lifts though that are called high capacity boom lifts that allow you to go up another 200 pounds in the basket at its max reach putting you at 750 pounds. Today we're going to be talking about the ground controls of this boom lift. Please note the colors first off, which would be the purple and the blue. On JLG, which is what this model is, this is where you determine if you're going to be on the ground controls or the basket controls. So the first thing you would look at is the key to ensure it's turned to the ground control section of the boom lift. You would pull the e-stop or the emergency shutoff switch out. After you do that, you would crank it by pressing up on this switch and holding it until the machine is running. After you do that, this is also your safety switch where you are going to push it down to do any of the functionalities of the machine. This very bottom switch is your turntable which would allow the entire boom to turn left or right. The next switch up here raises the first section of boom as you can see by the picture. The second switch here raises the second section of boom. The third switch here raises your stick out to get your maximum reach of the boom lift. This switch raises and lowers the jib of the machine, which is just an extension of the boom arm. This switch here allows your basket to articulate to the left and to the right. And this switch here is your leveling basket control, which allows you to raise and lower the basket to be level with the area that you're working. All right, guys, we're in the basket of the boom lift. We're gonna start up here at the top and notice the crush guard protection. This is simply a wire that goes across to prevent any kind of injuries or damages to the machine while working overhead obstructions. If you happen to make contact with anything or if this were to come unhinged from the magnetic area over here, it will shut down the machine. It would do that and you would not be able to have any range of motion on the boom lift. Once you ensure that it's back on, we're gonna go ahead and go back down further into the boom. On the right hand side, we'll start here. This yellow toggle switch is for if the turntable is backwards and you're having to operate the machine backwards. You'll be able to know if it is backwards or forward by looking down at the base of the machine and seeing a black and white arrow on the axles of the machine. If you see the white arrow facing towards you, you are facing the correct way and you no longer need this switch. If you see the black arrow facing towards you, you would need to hold this switch to do any functions on the machine. From there, we'll go over to this yellow toggle switch. This one is to start the machine. Once the machine warms up and you engage it to start the machine, this will send your machine into an idle and you do not need this to operate any of the controls. You would actually be using the foot pedal right there in order to do so. You would place your foot on there and you need to keep your foot on there in order to operate any of the functions on it. If you keep your foot on there too long, it will stop the machine from working and you'll have to release the foot pedal and press back down. After that, we'll move over to the smaller toggle switches here. This one is your stick piece, which allows you to go outward on the machine. This one is your jib control, which allows you to raise and lower the jib or the knuckle of the boom up and down as well, which gives you a little bit more extension of area to work with. The next one right here is the secondary boom arm, which allows you to go a little bit higher. That's the second phase of the boom while going up in the air. This little toggle switch here allows you to swivel the basket to your left and to your right. This yellow button is your horn. As far as seeing an unsafe act or if you need to get somebody's attention, you can press this and it will sound off. Right here allows you to tilt your basket down or up to be level with the area of which you're working. And this toggle switch here is your speed control. All the way up is moving at your fastest rate. In the middle is your turtle speed, which allows you to move at a slower rate. And downward like this allows you to operate the boom as far as transporting it down in a slope or past the grade of what it would allow you to raise in the air. Please note though, you cannot use the boom lift 
on a steep grade. It will not allow you to raise and lower. This is strictly to transport it. After getting past that, we'll move over to the joysticks. See at the bottom here where this little switch is, you need to pull this up in order to move the machine. This particular toggle right here allows you to raise the main section of the boom and then lower it. If you push it to the left or to the right, this allows you to turn the entire boom left or right. On the right hand side, you'll see this joystick. Same thing, lift up on the metal piece and you can push it forward to drive forward, backward to drive backward. And then to turn your tires, there's a switch up at the top of the joystick where you just turn it left to go left and right to go right. The limits for a boom lift are endless. You can do tree work, you can do electrical work, you can put guys up on a roof as far as if they're changing shingles out on your house, whatever the case may be. The possibilities with a boom lift are endless. You use a boom lift normally when you have to go up and out somewhere instead of going straight up and down to get to the area that you're working, which is when you would use a scissor lift. Boom lifts range typically from 30 feet all the way up to 180 foot. This is an articulating boom lift, which allows you to go up and over to the areas that you're working. If it's a straight boom, you can only go up and out. There is no being able to go up and over an area, like if you're working on the drive-through area of a church, right there at the front, to get to the steeple, you need an articulating boom so you can go up and over to it instead of just up and out. On larger booms, such as 120 or higher, the axles actually extend outward to operate as outriggers for rollover protection for the operators of the boom lift. The reason that they extend outward, the base of the machine is so heavy and so wide they have to. The reason they extend inward is for transportation to get them underneath eight and a half feet so they can be transported on a standard low boy. You can also use the auxiliary power on this boom lift. A lot of construction guys and a lot of contractors will use this for sky welding. What they do is they actually have a welding package here and you would have a, an electrical hookup to plug in your welding attachment here. And this safety switch right here allows you to cut on and off the power to your electrical socket. In closing today, guys, I hope this has helped you feel a little bit more comfortable about using this boom lift. If you ever have any questions about using equipment like this, always reach out to the dozer team and we'll be more than happy to help you.